It's obvious that Nintendo is dominating the handheld market. A statement made even more true by the fact that the Nintendo Switch has sold so well in its first year. With that said, Sony's own portable has very well been abandoned. But what worth does their own device hold in 2018? Introducing the PlayStation Vita. Let's discuss its placement in today's handheld market. The exterior design consists of plastic in its entirety. Don't be fooled. The front panel looks and even feels like glass, but it's just a tough plastic. And the seemingly metal trimmings from a distance are also made out of plastic. The Vita is very lightweight, but incredibly durable. The front consists of a 960x544 5-inch OLED display, along with two front-firing speakers and a 640x480 front-facing camera. The back consists of the rear touchpad and 640x480 rear-facing camera. As for buttons, we have the usual X, triangle, square, and circle buttons, the D-pad to analog sticks, home button, select button, and start button. On the top, we've got our L and R triggers and sleep-wake button. As for ports, there is a proprietary charging entry, a slot for the memory card, a slot for game cartridges, and an accessory port. As mentioned earlier, the PS Vita has a 940x480p OLED display. This display is very nice despite the low resolution. Colors look quite good on this display, and you'll be able to see very deep blacks and very bright whites. It's also a touchscreen, which is nice. The software from the PS Vita, right off the bat, is pretty clunky and unattractive. Honestly, a huge visual downgrade from what we had with the PSP, as its user interface looks more modern than the Vita's. You can't get away with not using the touchscreen in the menus because you have to use it to unlock the device. Aside from that, it gets the job done, but I wish Sony had used an interface that is more appealing and that offers more options for organizing files. The speakers for handheld get pretty loud. They are okay for content consumption, but they simply perform better in gaming. They seem to lack bass almost entirely, but they are well positioned. Both cameras support a resolution of up to 640x480, and both cameras are pretty terrible. However, the intention with these cameras isn't to film or take quality photos, but simply for AR games that require the use of a camera. For that, they are sufficient. The PS Vita features an ARM Cortex A9 core CPU, SGX 543MP4 Plus GPU, 512MB of RAM, and 1GB of storage. So yes, a memory card is a necessity with this system. Now that we've gotten those specs out of the way, let's talk about how the Vita performs with these specifications into consideration. There are many different genres of games available for the Vita. For the sake of time, however, let's test out a fast-paced shooter and a simple JRPG. Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified isn't the prettiest looking game, but it performs well enough. It's relatively comfortable to play, and it makes use of the touchscreen for your melee attacks. It's actually pretty nice for playing. And since we are talking about JRPGs now, the obvious one to talk about is Persona 4 Golden. It's a pretty fantastic game, and it performs very well. Even though the sprites and models aren't very attractive or detailed, the stylization of everything from the menu UI to how dialogue is handled makes it a very appealing game, even on a low resolution screen like this one. So what about remote play? Is the PS Vita worth it for remote play? Well, that is the primary reason why I wanted a PS Vita. It performs decently, though it is dependent on how good your Wi-Fi is. You can utilize a rear touchpad in order to emulate the missing R2, L2, R3, and L3 buttons. It may not be very optimal, but it works. As for turn-based games, it's more than sufficient. I like it, and there are so many games that are compatible with remote play, such as Dragon Ball Fighters, Monster Hunter World, Final Fantasy XV, and many more. I think it's worth it for that alone, but at a good price, I should specify. As for the usability aspect of the PS Vita, there are mostly good things to say. The Vita is very comfortable to hold and lightweight, making it easy to carry around. At first, I thought that the front-facing buttons would be clunky because of how small they were in comparison to the PSP, but they feel much better and are more tactile. A very nice addition. The buttons layout, vibrant colors of the display, and even the speakers made for a consistently good gaming experience. The battery life is also pretty fantastic, and standby mode was very convenient to use because of how long it lasted. Sony did an amazing job with battery management on this system. As for complaints, I honestly don't have many. The user interface for the Vita is my biggest problem with it. It feels clunky, it's unattractive and clearly optimized for use with the touchscreen for the Vita. Another one isn't an issue with the PS Vita, but it is an issue with making the entry into owning a PS Vita become more of a barrier. 
and that is the egregious prices of their respective memory cards. They are proprietary and priced to high heaven. For downloads, they are basically required because the Vita barely comes with any storage. Games will also require them anyway, so they are unavoidable, unfortunately. So that was our overall discussion about the Vita, but where does the Vita currently stand in 2018? Immediately, it should be said that the Vita simply cannot compete with the Nintendo Switch in its current state. The Nintendo Switch is a higher resolution screen, much more interesting games being released for it, and it is compatible with micro SD cards which are very affordable, and the PS Vita has been quietly killed off by Sony anyway. We had a recent system update, but the production of games for the Vita is slowing down immensely. The PS Vita isn't a system that you should purchase for the long term, because there isn't much of a future for it, but instead it should be purchased for the plethora of awesome games from the past. In other words, buy it while it's on sale, or used for that matter. Which finally leads us into the conclusion. The PS Vita is a pretty good device, and yes, there are games on the Vita, though I only mentioned two. But I probably wouldn't shell out the $200 with another $40 for a 16GB card for a console that has been quietly killed off. Wait for a sale or discount, and especially on the memory cards if you're interested. Remote play is a fine feature and I enjoy it quite a bit. Personally, it is worth the price of a used PS Vita. In other words, be cautious when purchasing one of these and always search for a better price than retail. If you can get a good deal, then yes, the PS Vita is worth it in 2018. For more content, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and to stay updated when a new video comes out, make sure to click on that bell and enable notifications. For links to everything featured in this video, expect to find those in the description along with links for what to watch next. And this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you all later. Enjoy.